Hello all, welcome to Clap Technologies. So you, this is the second video of the Splunk integration series. So in our first video we have seen how what is Splunk and how to install Splunk uh, in Windows and how to get that configured. Right, so in this video we will see how to send uh, logs, mules of logs from any point studio to Splunk. What it meant was, once we deploy this application in this local studio, you will see a couple of logs. These logger, these all the log messages in your application, those log messages are available in this console. It will be visible in this console. Right? So now, first let's see how we can transfer this any point studio generated logs to Splunk in this video. Okay, then in our next video, we will see how to send uh, logs from mule standalone server standalone server to splunk so that can be uh, very easy for you and in uh, obviously in our next video we will see how to send logs from cloud hub to um, splunk so in this way you will understand uh, the complete utilization of splunk and uh, how to configure in any of the scenario so in your real time project if any scenario is occurs in this uh, three this will be easy, easy for you to configure right so let's get started so to do this to demonstrate this actually i have created one simple project uh, just i have kept three loggers here and i'm sending some payload uh, payload i have transferred in this way uh, here it is just a normal one uh, we can say normal payload maybe let's delete this okay and now uh, this is the third logger. So, because we need to see these three loggers uh, log messages in Splunk, that is why I just kept more loggers here and the plain transfer message of uh, payload. So, now let's first uh, deploy this into AnyPoint Studio. If you observe carefully in this console part, it will once it is getting built, it will show you the path where these logs are getting stored. You need to observe this carefully. See, this is the one. This is the location. You need to just copy this location. You will get to know what it meant was. Okay. So, once your application is running in any point studio, it will show you one path like this. D folder, any point studio, plugins, and this is the path. So, this is nothing but the path where the log files are stored. So, now let's see see this is the complete application log see before it get deploys it is actually before it get deployed actually it is going to add all the dependencies and all so this is the path if you can see in this path you will find where this logs from this any point studio is going to store okay first let's see uh, if this is getting deployed or not then we will see a couple of things I am just maximizing this again. See here it is deployed. This test application is right. So now let's go to that path which we have copied. This is the path uh, where I have ex extracted my AnyPoint Studio. So this is my AnyPoint Studio path. Inside that, inside the plugins uh, uh, folder, you will find this logs. Let's go there. Uh, so this is my AnyPoint Studio. I mean where I have extracted it D folder in Epan Studio maybe you can just copy that path you can go there directly instead of uh, going one by one okay so I'm just copying this path entering here yeah now if you can see this is the mule path where all your applications, deployed applications, everything is getting saved. If you remember, in our uh, on-premise deployment video, we discussed the folder structure. The apps, domains, logs, these are the three main folders which we are going to discuss. I mean, which we discussed in our uh, on-premise uh, deployment series. Right? So, this is the same folder structure which is following the Unipad Studio also. So, sometimes you will find once the large log is getting displayed, this you, you, you cannot see the entire log here in this console. Once you do, do the testing, this previous log will gone here from this console. So, where you can see the uh, complete log. That is what here. So, Mule any part studio will store all the log files here in this particular folder structure. 
just like the any on premise studio on premise server this is the apps folder where the project is getting deployed so this is the project which we, we have just deployed test project log see the test project log this is the project name test project log this is the this is getting deployed here in the apps folder and if you remember this is the anchor document which we have already discussed uh, once any application is deployed in on-premise server it will generate on anchor text uh, document for that particular project so just like that in point studio also generated in the same way because any point studio is coming up with embedded server so embedded on-premise server so like this you can see the logs in the logs folder see these are all the different other projects previous project logs uh, you can see the same log here like the application log before it is getting deployed it will generate these many log messages right so this log will be available uh, in mule e let's come down yeah this is the one here you can see that log let me just open it with uh, notepad plus plus Um, see if you can observe this is the same log which we have seen in our any point studio uh, okay and at the end it is showing default domain is deployed as well as this test project log is deployed okay so you can see this is the deployment log of any point studio it is getting stored in this file just like that if you run this application for each and every project there is a separate log we didn't test this application yet let's test this application once I'm just going to clear this console from here. So let's test this application by using Postman and let's see how the log file is getting generated. So before you integrate uh, this into Splunk, you need to understand these things first. So this is the one which I have created that application. It's a post method you write one test log project. This is the same which I have created test log project. Okay. Now let me hit this. Yeah, now I got 200 OK and this is the payload which I have transformed from the input payload. Now if you can see, here few logs are getting generated. Okay, Earlier we have cleared the previous log. Here one, one info log, another info log which is the, uh, displayed the payload. And the another info, info log, just a third log or like the text message. So these are, this is the log messages from this application. Let's see where it can get uh, stored let's just refresh this um yeah let's see if uh, with this application if any log is getting generated mm, see this is the project name test project log with your same <coughs> with the project name which you have created with the same name one log file is getting generated here so here you can see your project logs earlier we have seen the application logs right so yes so this is a test project log if you can see you can see the same log messages here the three loggers let me just zoom it see third logger and the payload same similar log okay now let's see how we can transform this log messages uh, to splunk so now in that case we will not able to see the logs here let me just uh, clear the console let's see how to configure this to splunk 
so now i want to transfer all the logs getting printed here in this console to splunk i don't want to see the logs here or uh, i just wanted to make the copy of the logs into splunk so to do that you need to first log in into your splunk so if you are visiting this video first time you will not understand how to log in this splunk and all please watch our previous video where we have explained everything how to configure and set up this splunk so let's log in into splunk so to configure this Nipad Studio logs to be uh, transferred in Splunk, you need to do the settings first. So how to do that? Go to settings, go to data inputs, okay, and uh, click on files and directories. Here some files are already there, some files and directories are already there. We need to add the new one. So now here we have to mention that logs path where the log files are getting generated this is the path right so just copy this path and go to this plunk uh, place here okay just click on browse it will get synced so you need to first give the log files path where the log files are getting created and these two are the optional maybe we can just discuss this later click on next now here uh, the app context by default it, will, it should take search and reporting if not you need to just select this search and reporting and then come down so this is the host field name my laptop name it is automatically picked up in your uh, real time projects you will not install this plunk into your local machine it will be uh, deployed in uh, project server so in that case the project server host it will take okay now this is the index this is the main thing you need to remember by using this index only we can able to search the logs okay so let's create a new index for this i can say mu local because this is the local uh, log we are going to send uh, i mean we are going to send the logs to splunk right so just place i am just giving mu local uh, then you can leave as it is click on save uh, go to review yeah this is just it will show you the path which we have configured and all click on submit now if you can click on start search it will uh, get all the logs from your any part studio to here see it is automatically getting that okay you can just uh, remove this you can just search with the index index equal to mule local because we have given mule local as an index so it is showing 8987 events okay it means that 8987 log messages are there but to be frank we have uh, tested only couple of only one time but uh, it is taking all the other previous other applications logs also because in this lo logs folder i have some old applications also it will take all the other log files as well it is uh, getting uh, sync it up with Splunk. So now, if you want, you can see your own uh, logs here. Okay. Yeah. Now you can search uh, logs based on this event numbers or uh, any IDs also. Okay. Just give space. Give this. It will uh, show you the uh, events related to that particular ID. One default ID tracking ID will get generated na uh, UUID. So with that also you can search. See it is showing six events. So only six logs are there for this one. Okay. So now let's uh, test this again. Let's trigger this again. And also one more thing, you can select the time also based on like uh, uh, how many logs getting generated today or how many logs getting generated in last 15 minutes like that so last 15 minutes also it is showing this one because we just tested our application so other application logs it, it will not show you here because today we tested our application only also one more thing if you want to see this particular log payload here you can just expand this like this it will show you the entire payload in a neat way you can uh, you can actually go through all the logs in a structured manner 
so you can search in any by using any log message particular log message you can search you can search by using the host you can search by using the source path like that you can search with any parameters here this is the actually power powerful tool of uh, I mean features of this Splunk tool so you can search for these many filters you can search for you, know, you can use these filters like that okay let's uh, trigger it one more time okay yeah uh, as my application is deployed in this any part studio I cannot stop it uh, you can see the logs here as well as here once I stop that application in any point studio once I deployed it in uh, on-premise server then it won't show see with this tracking ID it, it is showing only six events let me remove this and let me just put this uh, 15 minutes only earlier it was uh, six events right now it should be increased see now it is 12 events okay so it means we just uh, tested this uh, application again so within 15 minutes we tested two times so events is getting increased so now this time that event id is a different one so if you can test uh, search with this particular event id it will show you only six logs so this is how you can actually use this splunk for search so it is showing only six events for this particular tracking id so usually in our new soft applications we will have transaction id or tracking id or any other unique number right with that also you can search easily how many logs is getting generated with that particular id so that you can track one by one okay so i hope this will be useful for you like in the similar way we need to uh, configure on-premise server logs also into the splunk uh, let's see that in next video so please subscribe share and like our videos for more tutorials thank you